Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to run through how I drew this portrait. I've stuck to simple tools and shortcuts throughout. Therefore, this should be something that you can easily draw as well. So let's begin. I'm starting with a fresh artboard on Adobe Illustrator and the size of it is 1000 by 1000 pixels. Now here is a trick that I use for portraits. I never draw them 100% from imagination because let's be honest, that would be hard. Instead, I keep about three to five pictures with me on my phone to use as a guide while drawing. So if I ever get stuck, I can look at them and get ideas, especially for more difficult items like the way hair should fall, the way shadows frame the face, or even sometimes to just draw the eyes or the lips. The photos I've selected for today's portrait are these. So you might see some elements elements in my drawing resembling them. I prefer looking at them on my phone, but you can even paste them at the side of your artboard in Illustrator so that you can reference them while drawing. In this way, you are not copying one photo exactly as it is from the internet. You're creating your own original portrait with some help from a few existing pictures. Now, back to the artboard. I'm going to open up the Layers panel on the right. I'm double clicking on the words Layer 1 to rename it to the word base. Because on this layer, I'm going to draw the base or the foundations of my portrait. You don't have to work with layers, but man, does it make things easy while drawing. I'll show you why as we go along. Next, I'm going to go to the color swatch here, which is currently white. Double click on it to open up the color picker panel. And let's choose a color that we can use for the skin of her face. This shade looks fine and this is the hex code that I am settling at in case you guys want to try it. Then hit OK. Also remove the black stroke. Now let's begin with drawing by selecting the pen tool which is also shortcut P on your keyboard. Start with the right half of her face like so. Then create a copy of it using the shortcuts Command C and Command F. A copy has been created exactly over the right half. Now right click on it, go to transform and choose reflect. Make sure vertical is selected and hit OK. Then move the copy to the left side. Now highlight both halves, open up the pathfinder tool on the right and hit unite. This will combine both halves of your face into a single shape. Next, let's draw her neck by first selecting a slightly darker skin tone. Once again, come to the swatch shown on the left, double click it to open up the color picker panel. I'm selecting a darker shade like so at this hex code and hitting OK. Start by creating the right half first, then move it to the back behind the shape drawn for her face by right clicking it, then go to arrange and send to back. Then proceed with the same steps as we did for the face. Creating a copy, reflecting it to the left and combine both halves using the pathfinder tool. I'm then moving to draw her eyes, except I'm not drawing them on her face at the moment. I'm starting at the side here. With my pen tool, set to having a white fill and a black outline, I'm drawing the border of her eye like so. Let's zoom in and now, selecting the ellipse tool from the toolbar on my left, I am drawing the iris of her eye. Remember to hold down shift while drawing the ellipse so that you get a perfectly round circle. Once you place your circle like so, highlight both the border of the eye and the circle that you drew. Select the shape builder tool. Then, while holding down alt, click on the extra areas above and below her eye in order to delete them. Now the shape of the iris is ready, so let's color it in. For this, open up the gradient panel on the right and click on radial gradient. Now by default, Illustrator will give your iris a gradient that is black at the borders, fading to white at the center. If you click anywhere on the gradient panel like this, you can add in a third color to your gradient. In this case, let's change this third color to brown by choosing a brown shade from the CMYK spectrum here. Once you click on a shade, the CMYK bars will appear and we can adjust the brown to a shade that we like. Let's mess around with the settings and then close the panel. Now let's zoom in. Get back to the ellipse tool 
and draw a black circle at the center for her pupils. Next, take your pen tool with a white fill and draw in these sharp edged pokey shapes like so surrounding the pupil. Then highlight them all, come up here to opacity and reduce it to about 15%. Then continue with the ellipse tool with a white fill again to draw in two more circles like this. Next, use the color picker panel to find a light peachy shade and draw in the left inner corner of her eye. Now, since this shape is lying over the black outline of the eye, let's highlight the shape. Come to the transparency panel on the right and change the transparency mode to darken so that the black outlines of the eye below come through it. Continuing with the peach fill, let's also draw a shape at the bottom of the eye like so. Now change the pen tool's fill to black and let's draw the fold of her eyelid above. Once that is done, let's move to drawing her eyelashes. For this, I'm first starting by drawing a black shape like this on the upper border of the eye. I'm then switching to my pencil tool and drawing the eyelashes on this shape. Okay, for now, let's highlight everything drawn so far for the eye and let's group it together by hitting Command G on your keyboard. Then let's place it on her face and see what it looks like. Make a copy as well, move it to the left and group both the eyes together. Then keep adjusting the size and the position until it looks okay on her face. So now that we have an idea of where her eyes fall, let's draw quick gentle outlines of her nose and lips as well. For the nose, with my pen tool, I'm drawing a shape like this and copy pasting it to the right. For the lips, I'm picking a nude shade and first drawing the left side of her upper lip. Then once again using the shortcuts Command C and Command F, I'm creating a copy, reflecting it to the right and uniting both halves in the Pathfinder tool. Now choose a slightly darker shade than the upper lip and draw her lower lip as well, like so. Bring the upper lip to the front by right clicking it, go to Arrange and click Bring to Front. Next, with the pen tool with a black stroke only, move to drawing in the details of the nose. Now that the basics or the foundations of her face have been drawn, let's move to creating a second layer above this. For this, open up the layers panel on the right, click on the plus icon and layer 2 will appear. Now double click on layer 2 and rename it to shadows. Next, lock the layer called base and let's start drawing on shadows. Now, as I mentioned, you don't have to create layers, but it does get massively easy to draw if you do, because now I can draw as much as I want on layer two without my pen tool accidentally connecting to something that I drew on layer one. Create layers whenever you finish one major stage of drawing, guys. In my case, the shadows are my second stage of drawing. Now, this is where things get interesting. I'm gonna start creating shadows and highlights for my portrait. And it is literally the same set of steps that I will repeat over and over throughout the video. I'm gonna first begin by selecting a darker shade of the skin tone like this for all the shadows that I will draw. Then let's start at the shadows for her under eyes. With my pen tool, I'm drawing a shape like this. I'm then gonna go to Effect, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Make sure that Preview is selected so that you can see the adjustments that you make to your drawing. Adjust the radius and it looks okay at about 4 pixels. Then hit OK. Then come up here and reduce the opacity to about 50%. And that is how I keep creating shadows and highlights throughout. So remember those steps guys. Now let's zoom in and add some more detail to her eye. At the bottom, I'm drawing a shape that lines her eye like this. Again, select Gaussian Blur and a radius of about 0.8 pixels and hit OK. Reduce the opacity to about 50%. I'm then moving to add a smoky eyeshadow effect on her eyelid in the same way.
Then let's zoom in and with the pencil tool selected, let's draw in the eyelashes below in the same way that we drew them above. Now let's do her eyebrows. For this, we have three steps to follow. First, draw the main eyebrow shape that you want. Then reduce its opacity so that you can use it as a guide and draw over it. Second, with the pencil tool having a black fill, draw a second eyebrow over this, adding a little more detail to its shape. Reduce that as well to about 50%. Third, select the brush tool. Then come to the brush definition panel and select charcoal pencil at a stroke of about 0.0078 inches. Also remove any fill if present. Now draw rough strokes that form the hair in her eyebrow. When that is done, group all three layers together by hitting Command G on your keyboard. Adjust the eyebrow to be placed however you want and then copy and paste it to the other side as well. Next, let's draw the shadows of her nose using the same shadow color that we used for her under eyes. Draw a shape like this along the length of her nose. Go to Gaussian Blur with a radius at about 5, hit OK. In this case, since the shade is falling over the eyebrow and sort of blurring it out, let's go to the transparency panel on the right and change the transparency mode to darken so that the black of the eyebrow comes through the shadow. Then reduce the opacity to about 40% and reflect it to the right side. In the same way, I'm drawing shadows at the tip of her nose and at the sides. The Gaussian blur's radius and opacity is different for each shape, however. You just need to keep adjusting these units to see what suits her face best. Once that is done, let's add some highlights to the nose. Now like we chose a shadow color, let's choose a light skin tone for the highlight color. Open up the color picker again and a lighter tone here looks okay. Then draw a shape like so. Add the Gaussian blur and the highlight looks fine just as it is, so I'm not going to reduce the opacity for this. Also add highlights to her cheeks. Then using the shadow color again, add shadows at her cheekbones. Now for her lips. Let's zoom in and I'm going to start with my pen tool in a black fill to draw a shape at the very center of her lips like this. I'm also drawing a shape defining her cupid's bow above, except change the fill for this to white. Now choose a darker nude lip color shade and draw a shape at the center of her lips. Then Gaussian blur it out. Also again, change the transparency mode to darken so that the black shape I drew below is seen through this shade. Then for the white Cupid's bow we drew above, reduce the opacity to about 40%. Next, with the pencil tool in a white fill, draw out sharp shapes like this. Once that is done, reduce the opacity of these to about 20%. Then going back to the shadow color, draw a shadow below her lip like so. Let's move to her top lip now and in a similar manner add white sharp shapes with the pencil tool and reduce their transparency again. This looks okay so far but I'm just going to move this shadow a little higher. Now for one final touch for the lips, pick an even darker nude shade and use the pencil tool to draw out strokes like this.
change the transparency to darken and reduce the opacity to 20%. So I think by now that you guys are slowly getting a hang of things. Let's zoom out, check the overall look and work on more shadows and highlights. I'm adding shadows to the side of her face and also highlights to her chin. Also add a dimension to the area above her lip. Next, add some dimension to her neck. Okay, now I'm going to take a break working on her face and move to creating her hair just so that I can get a better idea of what the whole portrait will start to look like. For her hair, I'm creating a third layer by coming to my layers panel, clicking the plus icon, then double clicking it to rename it hair. Make sure your hair layer is unlocked while the other two layers are locked. Now for the hair, let's first choose a shade of dark brown. Then, with the pen tool, start drawing the main outlines of her hair. Now, with the pencil tool, draw in some extra strands of hair here and there. Next, choose a slightly lighter shade of brown, zoom in and draw in more details. Go in for another round of detail after choosing another lighter shade of brown and this time I'm using the pencil tool. Then back with the pen tool, I'm choosing an even lighter brown shade for the stroke this time and drawing in hair strands like so. Now what I'm doing is changing the stroke and variable width profile of these strands. So highlight the strands that you want modified first, then come up here to the variable width profile and choose width profile 1. This will give these strands a wider center and a tapered edge at both sides. I'm also modifying the stroke to 0.0625 inches. Similarly, I'm adjusting more hair strands also trying out variable width profile 4, which gives the strand a tapered end at only one side. Finally, with my pencil tool back on the darkest shade of brown, I'm drawing in single strands of hair like this and adjusting the variable width for a few of them as well. So now that I have a better idea of what my overall portrait will look like, I'm going to stop with the hair and go back and work on the skin for the final adjustments. Let's open up the layers panel and make the hair layer invisible by clicking on the eye icon. Lock it as well. Then unlock the shadow layer to start working on it. I'm starting by drawing shadows on her forehead. Then move to her eyes. Highlight her cheekbones a bit more and add a little dimension to the rest of her face as well. All throughout using the same Gaussian blur technique.
And that's it for the skin guys. Let's add the final touches to her hair. I'm adding a bit of black and adjusting the transparency of a few sections of hair here and there so that it looks a little more realistic. And that is it guys, this is what I am stopping with. So guys, I hope that you were able to pick up a few ideas from this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if there is anything else you would like to see me draw. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.